Back to the camp now. It's right there. We were literally, we were literally right up on top of that ridge. There's a better shot of the peninsula. Uh, there. Now I know after that trailer you guys are pretty excited for the video, we're going to jump right back into it. But first, a huge shout out to my sponsor for this trip and this video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Alright, I picked three. This is the Terra Kit. So with Bespoke Post, every month you get new stuff delivered to your door. I guess you fill out a questionnaire and based on personal preferences they send you different boxes. So oh yeah, okay, so I did this one was for the like personal hygiene. This is a base like grooming, detox scrub bar with charcoal. That's pretty manly. Gold moss and charcoal. Nice. A bird call. Oh it's a bird call. What? I think you twisted if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. Yeah. A pooper, pooper digger? What is this? Oh yeah, that's pretty beefy. Bespoke is free to join and you can skip a month anytime. You get $70 worth of gear for just 45 bucks a month. It's always changing up. The trail kit in black. The trail kit in black. I'm intrigued. Where exactly a hanging bear bag, water jug, lantern hack, spawning snake bites like a zoologist. So it's got survival tips on that card. And then you got this ammo box here. You got a wire saw, uh, it's got the little pull uh, on the ends. You got a paracord bracelet. Everybody loves those P cord bracelets. You got another knife with a sheath and a book. I'm more interested in a book, Surviving the Great Outdoors. This is called the Smoked, I believe. This is the Smoked Kit. Torch kit. I am excited. I haven't opened this part, just the big box. Oh, sick. Oh, I'm stoked on this. Yep. Yup. Yup. Yeah. Candle. So check them out online at bespokepost.com or Instagram at bespokepost and use the coupon code ROBINET20 to save 20% off your first purchase. That's ROBINET20 at bespokepost.com. Thank you very much, Bespoke, for sponsoring a video. Thanks to you guys for watching. As always, on to the video. Hey, folks, how you doing? I'm very excited to show you guys this video. Buddy Mike's along for the trip. We're out in the middle of the wilderness. We're going to spend a few days out here. We're hiking towards that mountain in the back. So we got about six kilometers to cross this big lake. Then we're going to find a portage 
we have to cross over snowy land with lots of hills and rocks. We're pulling these sleds, both of us, so we might need to help each other over the land. But we're going to camp on the next lake over, make a really comfortable winter camp for us, and have a lot of fun. So Joe, it's good to be back. Yeah. It's been a while. Last time we went on a trip together was 2019. It's a canoe trip, so we've been planning to go on a winter trip for a little while. Um, so for me, it was about a seven hour drive to get here in northern Ontario. We're lucky that there's this one single solitary snowmobile track, which is making pulling very easy. And the snow is actually not too bad off of the track, but here you can almost just walk without snowshoes, so it's going to really help us get deep quickly without having to struggle with slush or deep snow. The temperature right now is about minus 15 degrees Celsius. Um, we're here for four days. The high each day is supposed to be around minus 5 degrees, minus 6 Celsius, and the nights are going to be around minus 20, so it's about perfect weather for good deep country, backcountry winter camping. So we're gonna put a shell on. It's just cotton canvas, that way the wind doesn't cut through. And we're getting a little bit cold, minus 15 with the wind chill, I'm not really sure what it was, but as we're getting out into the lake, we're getting the wind coming from the northwest a little bit more, and we were a little bit sheltered at the beginning. What do you think, Mike? It's windy. It's windy. We're getting close. We're probably maybe three quarters of the way now, or 80%. We're pretty sweaty. Yeah, my back's getting sweaty. But the problem is with the wind, you have to have some kind of shell on. Yeah. Oh, bull, that melon's right behind you. That portage we're looking for is right at the base, so we're getting there. We've come a ways. Yeah, man, out of shape. This is a hike. This is definitely a hike in, and we're very blessed to have this one lonely snowmobile track headed probably to the exact spot we're going. It seems that way, eh? So, two feet off or a foot off this track either side, and we'd be uh, probably doubling our distance time, doubling our travel time. There's a helicopter flying right overhead, flying pretty low actually. Where you are. What does it say? Number. Just an ID number. It has a, like a basket on the side of it though. Did you see that? Oh, that was kind of neat. Yeah. How long has it taken us to get across the lake, Mike? Two hours, almost exactly. Portage is just right there. So that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, like Joe said earlier, if we had to walk in the unpacked stuff, it might have been double. And it looks to me like the sled trails go right to the portage, so I'm not hating that at all. No. We have arrived to the portage. Now it'll be a matter of seeing how rough the portage is and seeing as how the sled looks like there's sled trails going through it, it can't be too bad, which I'm stoked on. But that does mean there might be snowmobiles on the on the next lake at least, but oh well, not a deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same. I'm just gonna pull up here a little further. Sounds good.
It's uphill. Whoa! <laughs> a little off road for you. A little off road action. Well, we've come to this. Everything else has been child's play up until this point. <laughs> we got some good elevation. But we're hopeful that once we cross this over top of there, uh, I can see blue. So Yeah, we're hoping that's the lake. Yeah. No coach, no hats. Same for Mike. We're warm. We're just trying to abide our time before we have to go up this hill. <laughs> the elevation looks like absolutely nothing in the camera. It looks like a, looks like a 45 degree slope. <laughs> this is a bunny slope. <laughs> oh! She's a smooth ride. <laughs> Made it 99% of the way upright. Okay, so we are at the destination lake where we're going to camp. And not any time too soon. I need to melt some snow and get some more water into me. And I'm pretty hungry too, so. Oh yeah. What do you think, Mike? Looking good? Yeah, we can see the mountain from over here. Sweet. A little spit of land, maybe that'll be good if we can find somewhere flat. Yep. How's that for a view? We're gonna try and camp on that dome right there so we can have that mountain in the view. I keep calling it a mountain, I know it's not, but just let me have my, my little mini mountain. So we're trying to get up onto that bald spot there where Mike's going, but there's some open water, or some actually some slush, just on either side of these tracks. So we're gonna cut across the untouched spot, get up in there and hopefully just tuck right back behind that bald dome and hopefully there's some, some flat spot right there for us. That will be an epic, epic campsite with a great view. It's a little sketchy. I might point it out there. Avoid. I'll, 
that way, I'll grab it, hold it tight. It looks like it's going to be a suitable spot up there. We'll take you on up and check it out. It's very windy, but that's okay. The tent will help us with that. It'll firm up after what half an hour or so. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to jump off the cliff. Yep. <laughs> so Mike and I are just camping down the snow here. Might look a little silly. We're not dancing, I promise. This isn't the white man's dance. We are uh, going to do this and then go go off into the bush and get some boughs. Put down. Because digging down here would just no doubt it'll unearth some uneven rock or some tree that's fallen down and there's quite a bit of snow up here so we tamp this all down and while we are going to get the boughs and some firewood this will solidify a little bit and then it should be all right for a few days while we're out here but the, gra the snow is very granular and soft uh, because it's pretty cold out understand why Inuit have a bunch of words for snow now. There's a reason, you know what I mean? It comes in different... Snow isn't snow. Snow isn't snow. Take that away with, with you folks. Snow what do you think? Snow. It's been about an hour or so? Yeah, 45 minutes. How does it feel? Feels a lot more firm than before. Yeah. I think we're probably okay to set the tent up now. Nice. Start laying in the floor. Okay. You need the Y piece, Joe. Why? Huh? Not a dad joke, Mike. Showing your age there, but. Well, bam, son. That looks like a perfect footprint for it, too. Pull it up this way, son. Because there's no trees on this side or anything to tie it off to, we're going to have to put snow anchors on the back side and on this side and maybe the front of the tent. Um, ideally I'd be using a longer stick than this, but this is what it broke off to be. I'll show you how well these snow anchors work. Uh, when we leave here in a few days, I'll, I'll probably need my axe in order to bust through the snow to get this snow anchor out. That's how solidified it gets in there. Just want to get to as far down as you can. Stick, it side, stick the stick sideways and then bury it a bunch of snow and then stomp on top of it with your snowshoes or your boots but your snowshoes help a little bit more and that'll stay just as good as if it were tied to a tree. I'm getting all deep. I'm getting all deep. All right, we're getting somewhere. As you can see, the back needs done as well. Pretty windy, man. Pretty, pretty windy. Oh, shit. oh, sorry, guys. Took you for a ride there, real quick. No shoes and tripods don't really work out. No shoes and tripods
got to get this front end. The front end tied out, I had to add a little piece of Kevlar cord to the original tie out because it wasn't long enough, but we're just going to do a simple overhand, nothing fancy, because we are in a hurry to get in here and get our stuff set up. All right, we're about done. Get our bows in there and uh, make this like home. Oh, there's snow in my glove. It's cold. It's cold. Sink a bit, a little bit. I'll just get down on my knees and I won't. I'll, I'll build as I go. I'll get some snow on the skirt out here and uh, tie the last one off if you want to do that. All right, we're gonna share the work just to make things go a little bit quicker. Mike's gonna lay the bed in there. We got a plenty of boughs. We get some snow on the skirt. Tie this last tie out up, and then we'll get the uh, the stove ready to get on in there. Shovels are invaluable in the winter time. Gotta bring them on a camping trip. They're pretty tough and they extend. Packable and light. them. This is chimney is weird in the fact where it goes smallest to biggest, biggest being on the top. Oh, is that yeah. Huh. Well I don't know. I don't know if it's normal but it is for this one. Yeah. And this is the piastre resistance. Yeah, extend it, I'll probably extend it. Bam! Nice and easy. Now if it holds up to that wind, we know it's good. Beauty spot. Couldn't ask for more scenic. That big rock there. And Mike did an amazing job of laying the boughs in here. It's, it smells like Christmas time all over. All the time. Oh, beauty. Just beauty. Wood stove is set up nicely. We've got the two logs in the holes on the on the legs to keep it from sinking at all if it was going to. It smells so good. So they, they call this a two or three man tent, but as you can see, it's pretty maxed out with two guys. So uh, while we're in the daytime, while we're just kind of lounging, we're gonna put all the sleeping stuff in the back. So we're, for my sleeping gear, I have my Bushcraft Spain uh, oil skin slash wool blanket ground sheet, which is amazing. I'm going to do a full video on a lot of their gear really soon. 
Then I've just got my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag. Um, Thermarest New Era, negative 20 bag. That kind of wraps around it, keeps it contained and protected. And I'm just gonna toss it on top of Mike's setup in the back here. He's got a similar setup. We can do anything there. Yep. That's good back there. And now we have room for our chairs. Mike went ahead and played the smart smart guy game and put furry tennis balls on his bottom so he's not sinking through all the time. We gotta take a cue off that I think. I don't weigh 120 pounds. Uh, man, 100 pounds, come on man. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just sinking a little oh. bit. <laughs> you gonna start this bitch or you wanna just chill in here? What do you think? What do you wanna do? I don't know. I'm okay right now. I'm kinda, t yeah, I'm not cold. I'm not cold either. I'm, let's, I don't wanna get too comfortable. We're not gonna wanna get wood. Okay, let's get wood. Do you want, do you, or do you wanna just like chill for 10, 15 in here, eat, drink, and then we'll go? I could certainly be alright with that. Yeah, I need to eat. I've had like, I'm running probably a crazy calorie deficit. out with this choice hardwood. Most of it's maple, I believe. We didn't really have to go too far to get it. These pieces aren't the greatest. This one's not the greatest, but Mike's uh, Mike's got a real dry one uh, there. We'll start the fire with that one. You can hear how dry it is. I can throw some of the lesser dry pieces on after. steaks for tonight and Mike is going to cook them up for us in the cast iron pan because I'm not really well versed in that by any means and I would like to learn. No pressure? No pressure at all. Mike's the best in the world. <laughs> Inches? 24. Yeah. 24. So we got the 21, the egg with 21. Mike's got the 24 inch uh, saw from Adventure Swarm. I have so many like pieces of wood and like debris down my shirt. Oh, there we go. Look at it. <laughs> it's a little itchy. Debris. Okay, we're gonna cut this wood. We're gonna cut this wood for a little while. What is that? Three mirrors, wilderness axe. A little bit thicker? It's thicker, handle's a little bit shorter, head's a little bit heavier. that far away.
Ah, oh, that wind is kicking up. It's time to light this fire up. A little chilled here. So we got that damper completely open until this starts to go. Got a bunch of good twigs with lots of uh, old man's beard or lichen on them. So those guys will go up real quick. Throw all these in there. Got some split ones here. Thin twigs. Oh, this is going good already. Living large, Mike. Living large. No peasant life in the tent. It's fine. Okay, that looks like it's going pretty good from right here. Good. Yeah, the, the, the door's open, so there's a little tiny bit coming out, but I'll shut that in. A... It's pretty vertical. It's just drifting around the lake. Good. We're, we're worried about the placement of the stove pipe with the wind but Mike's out there and he says it seems to be pretty okay we got to get this door shut here because we're smoking oh look at that give her another blow for me like nice pocket bellows for the wind it was a little smoky at first eh Mike yeah the wind is not helping the situation I think we got it fixed up, uh, fixed up. So, what we did, what we did was angle the stovepipe more up and down, more vertical. Um, and I think that helped a lot. And we left the door open on the fire for a little while with the stove, with the damper completely open until it got until I got a good amount of heat going and then uh, and then we we're able to close it up but I'm I'm toasty you feel all right yeah my feet are still cold but yeah so we'll, the good thing about the stove we can there's a spot where we can uh, hang our, our boot liners next to it to dry them off so Mike can dry off his toesies and warm them up that's the whole problem mate that you hoop that's the whole problem eh? we, we hiked in we sweat so things are a little bit damp now but it's a good thing about the tent. It's it's a lot of hassle, and sometimes it may feel like it's more trouble than it's worth. But for an extended camp, even three, four days, uh, it's nice to be able to dry your stuff off. All right, we got some purple and red and white small potato, small potato, small potato, small potato. Got that on, almost. Uh, those have been cooking for what, 45 minutes or so, you think? Yep. They're almost ready. And we each got our respective steaks. And like I said, Mike is going to expertly cook them in the frying pan. <laughs> Attempt. No, no pressure. I got a ribeye. What do you got? I got a ribeye. I oh, do? Rib steak, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Just not tied up. I got mine pretty thick. Nice. Okay. Oh, it's buttery. It's all buttery. Mine's thicker, so I'm gonna toss it on. Oh, I gotta get that plastic off. Oh. Is it plastic? Yeah, they wrap it in. Oh, normally it's like butcher twine. It has both. Oh. That could have been a disaster. Yeah, that would have been bad. Wow. Oh, the, the garlic. The oh, garlic. it's in there, isn't it? I don't know. Get that lead. Get that lead. It should go in. Oh, that smells good. I can smell that already. Here's the, uh, it doesn't take a very long to cool a little on the garlic on the Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, let's throw the words on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
second cross stick on there. <laughs> <laughs> second Z's. That looks so soft. Yeah. I like garlic on top. I thought it was a little high. It was not a It's pretty thick. Pretty thick. Pretty thick. All these are for sure ready. Yeah? Yeah. Is the sauce? Want <laughs> <laughs> that to settle for a minute and rest? Drop. I don't think I filmed any of that. Oh yeah, that's so super that wet. Was wet. Yeah, very, very wet. Just a little garlic, garlic incense. Ah. All right, Mike, what do you got? Lovely. Okay, those are really good. Yeah, they soft. They're all caramelized and crispy. And we put them back in with the um, the butter from the steak, like the butter that we were frying the steak in. The steak egg. Yeah, so good. All right, well, this should be good. Thanks for cooking those. The potatoes might be some of the best I've ever had. Nice. We would never repeat that though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what we did. <clears throat> it was the extra steak bank at the end, I think. Yep. Oh, oh! Right? It is because I tried one before we did that, and this is not the same taste as that. Well, we basically made garlic butter. Mmm. We put two separate seasonings on it, so. Oh my goodness. Piastri is just. What do I got here? My beer's a little bit of a slushy. Yeah? Yeah. That's alright. Turn on top of the stove. That's a terrible idea. I can't reach it anymore. Mmm. Tasty. Yeah, everything else. Mm, 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 mm. Also, I got a Mad Tom in my CLP Scout Cooksa. So all is right in the world. We both felt a little, um, what's the word, tired, there's another word, but burnt out when we got here, it was about a three hour haul from the car, which doesn't sound like all that much, but when you're pulling the sled the whole time, and then going up the hills, and the last part really was the kicker, eh? Mm -hmm. But we were lucky that snowmobile trail went right through the portage trail. I can't imagine trying to break trail with those sleds and, and uh, with the amount of snow it is right now going uphill and stuff. It would Up that hill, breaking trail with those sleds, that would have been horrible. Yeah. <clears throat> but we were double teamed it and it still it wasn't that bad, but... The video is not going to show it. <laughs> anyway, feeling good now. I'm feeling really good. Some food into us. Tomorrow... We have plans to go check on another lake. We also plans to hike up that mountain, that quote unquote mountain. We're here for a couple of days though, so we got plenty of time. We do need to make sure we get a bunch of firewood tomorrow. We were super lucky tonight. We didn't have to go that far and we got a lot of a lot of hardwood. Half of it's a little damp, but that's okay. It'll still burn after a while. But we've gone through more than I thought we've gone through we would have gone through already. So, the wind was a little bit of an issue at first, but it seems to, to have died down now. It's supposed to be a windier tomorrow, but we think the wind is supposed to come from over top of the mountain, or whatever, whatever we're calling it, the big hill. <clears throat> so, we're hoping that it just whips over our campsite, because it was actually literally puffing the smoke back out of the tent, yeah, out the, of the stove. Yeah, the two doors, holes in the door of the stove, it was like, <laughs> blowing smoke out. Anyway, we eat this food up, hang out for a while, 
And I don't hate the idea of going to bed by 9 or 10 today. Yeah, it's 8 already. So, we'll let you know what we do. But, I'm going to eat this food up. smell vision Well, we're just getting ready for bed. It's about 8.30. No, 9.30. So yeah, that's totally justifiable, right? Well, that old man. It's a lot of work getting in here, setting up and everything. So, we're both pretty pooched. This thing bag is so cold. Setups. You had a note for a pee? Yeah. Alrighty. We both got a little bit of an awning. With Mike with his wool blanket. So you can put things next to you. Me with my... Uh, tarp slash wool blanket. Have stuff like fossils, <laughs> pouch, my knife, my headlamp. I'm sorry, my hat, my uh, boots, and water bottle. So, everything's good to go. Mike's got his set up too. All pretty comfortable. It's a uh, tight squeeze, tight squeeze for two guys. Stuff drying up there. I had to put my chair outside, there's just not enough room for it. Supper was very, very, very good. Extraordinary. Well, Cocoon Mike, is it about bedtime? I think so. How are you feeling? Toasted now. Nice. Well, I will be shortly. Alright, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> it's funny how like it does make a big difference when you go to bed already warm. 100%. Yeah, you're not fighting there, like shivering. Then they all have to jump in at like minus 20. <laughs> Doing the old hot water bowl. Yeah. We're gonna head in tomorrow. Uh, we got some plans. Stick with us. It should be fun. I'm not gonna go to bed with gum in my mouth. I promise, Mom. Good night.